without further ado, let me bring on my co-host tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Vosh Bodhi. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, man. Look, I have brought you to the dark side with wearing t-shirts on the show. <laughs> Normally you dress to the nines. Welcome. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. <laughs> Any, anytime I can collab, especially in my fashion aesthetics with you. Yes. I'm good. Right I'm on. good. I'm good. How are you doing, Vosh? Right. I'm doing all right. It has been yeah. a long five or six days, hasn't it? I wonder why. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot going on. So we have some people who have already started oh my commenting. God. Oh, my God. Let me see. Okay. Who's here? Let's say hello. Oh, there's. I see Blue. I see Roses and Alma. Hey, Alma. How you mm -hmm. doing? Uh, An old friend of mine, Judy Henderson, has decided to join us tonight. Hey, Judy. Thank you for coming on board. Hey, Judy. I like saying that name because that's a, that's 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 what we call good friends yes, in my circle. We call them Judys. Hey, Judy. At Atlanta, another friend is here. Hey, y'all. Welcome aboard. Thank you for being here tonight, everybody. Let me see. What did um, uh, Blue say? Let me see. You said 120, 120. No, it's 220 years later, Blue. I did my homework. So I'm, I, it's 220 years later. Okay. So, um, but, but yes, it has been a long time, but the bill has been passed. So um, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, so, Vaj, first of all, before we get going, Yes. I want to recognize that yesterday was National Transgender Awareness Day. Yes, and indeed. even though the show is today, and of course it would have been nice to, you know, have it in a moment and do that, I would like to honor and, and pay tribute to um, the National Transgender Awareness Day that was yesterday. So just want to make sure we said that. Yes, indeed. We mm -hmm. see you, our trans brothers and sisters and everyone in between. We recognize you, love you, and support you. Amen. Okay, okay, you all. Some of you all have been sending us private DMs, so we're going to do it. You know what this week has been. This week has been traumatic for a lot of us and it has taken us on an emotional roller coaster. And we're talking about the Oscars last Sunday. So Vash and I, we have, we have actually in our production meetings decided that we're not even going to talk about what we, what we want to talk about until we get on the show tonight. So um, Vash, if you will, what was, Vaj, what was that like for you? How has your week been since last Sunday in regards to that? <laughs> well, first of all, I did not watch the Oscars. I have a bunch of other stuff going on. So I didn't watch the Oscars. I did not know about it until you sent me that clip <laughs> through like a post on Twitter. And I watched it. And I have to tell you, after watching it, I didn't go to bed all night long. Like I was somewhat traumatized and like roped into that whole experience. I was online, I was looking for things, seeing what people had to say about it. Um, so it helped form my perspective and interpretation of those series of events. So I can't wait to hear what you have to say. But for me, that whole event was just a continuation of the conversation that we have with Dave Chappelle, right? Comedians going up, feeling as though they can say whatever they want to say about people and people are supposed to take it. And, you know, I didn't agree with it back then when Dave Chappelle was going on with his thing. I don't agree about it in general with comedians. I think that there should be some sort of sense of, I don't know, decorum. And to, to, to show you how truly impacted the comedians were and how they saw it, uh, Kathy Griffin was one of the first things that I came across. And she was saying, let me tell you something. It is a very bad practice to walk up on stage and physically assault a comedian. Like they're protected by this microphone thing. She goes, now they have to worry about who the next person is who's going to come on stage, you know, and be the next Will Smith. Mm -hmm. To me, that is exactly what this thing was like. Mm -hmm. It was someone saying, you're telling a joke. It's touching a subject. I don't think you should be doing it and giving feedback. Do I condone violence? Absolutely not. But as I was watching that, I couldn't help but think, wow, here's someone just not feeling as though they have to take someone's abuse. And to me, it wasn't a well-crafted joke. It was someone thinking, oh, I'm a comedian. I'm just going to throw something out, which was really just an insult mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to say, you know, hey, you're going to laugh because I'm a comedian. I'm funny enough. And someone else wrote something online that I saw. And they said, I hope that slap was felt on every stage in every comedy club by every comedian who thinks it's funny to make fun of sick, 
disenfranchised or marginalized people. The lesson here is to write better jokes that don't offend or belittle people. Edgy doesn't need to be insensitive. That's where I was coming from with this. Well, I feel you on, on all fronts. And before I give my opinion, I do, I would like to do this because there were a couple of moments that were completely overshadowed in my opinion. So first and foremost, I would like to just congratulate Will Packer, who was the first black producer um, of the of, of the Oscars. And what a way to, you know, have a first. Okay. You, you know, but but it happened and it was all an all black production company in 94 years. And I also want a to give a huge shout out to Quest Love, yes. who, who won his Academy Award for the Summer of Soul, ladies and gentlemen. And if you have not seen the Summer of Soul, if you have not, please find it and see it. It is the, the best feel good musical moment that I could ever say, take a look at. It is absolutely incredible. It is very good, well-deserved uh, uh, quest love. I, I really do hold my hands up to you. Okay, I saw it, I saw it. I was sitting on my bed and actually I do, whenever shows like that come on, I get on, on Facebook and I start sending my, you know, my messages to, you know, giving my opinions on stuff and people start relating and, and viewers, we're going to get to your, get to your question because I see you, cause I know y'all have something to say. And I, <laughs> I, I, I really do see you, Judy, I, cause Judy's on fire. So I, you know, I'm going I'm to get to you, Judy. Um, but I saw when I saw it happen, when I and you know, we were going back and forth, we were talking about people's clothes and all that. And when it happened, my best friend called me from um, he texted me from Chicago and said, Did you see that? That that what do you call it? He called it a um, he said, uh, what, what is it when, when it, it's like made up, it wasn't really really happening? He said, Did you see that fake slap or something like that? And I said, uh -huh. No, that was real. I said, That I that that was real. And at that moment, I thought, okay, here's a black man, me being a black man, he's going through something, something's bottled up inside of him, and he just break. We've done a show on triggers, Vosh. So totally. we, we know that everybody has triggers, and he just snapped. But having said that, let me go back to your point about Chris Rock. Comedians feel like they can just go on and say whatever they want to say about people, and it's all right. And the Oscars didn't make it any better which, by saying, well, that's what, that's what people do. They come on this show, they just talk about people. Again, another point where I'm just going, ah, uh, not feeling good to me. But Will going up there and slapping him, at first I was like, here's a troubled man taking up for his wife. Wow. But you actually got up out of your chair. You felt so privileged that you could get up out your chair and go assault someone, period. I don't care if it was in the bathroom. You felt like you could do that. And what has come over for me over the week about that was, what if Will was a darker man? What if he was, dark? say if Questlove, he said something about Questlove and Questlove in his whole attire, and I, I'm stereotyping, go up here and slap him. I think the security guards would have wrestled him to the stage and he would have been taken out. But they didn't do that to Will Smith. And so I'm feeling a little bit of something in that that I just thought me as a dark skinned man have gone through things in D.C. and have seen how people of a different complexion is treated different from me. All of those emotions came up for me. And I'm just, I'm sharing that with you. And I'm so happy to have this discussion with you, Vosh, because yeah. it's not a debate. This is, this is our opinion. And I think it, it affected me in a way, especially now where I'm like, you know, there's a lot of people that need to do some checking. The, the Academy, Will Smith, which I just have just heard uh, from Judy, that Will Smith has announced that he has resigned from the Academy and, have, and just released a heartfelt apology. Okay, mm -hmm. keep keep doing it. I'm not I'm not judging him. I don't walk in his shoes. But what he did was despicable. It was what a lot. Did, it was a lot. It was a lot. And like yeah. I said, I am not condoning violence. I I don't know that I can speak to uh, what would have happened if 
someone had been another race, as Judy was saying, or a darker skin person, or anyone other than Will Smith. I mean, it's it's hard to speculate and have hypotheticals with something so incredibly dramatic exactly. and and traumatizing. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm I'm just gonna say <laughs> there was a part of me that was like, dang, I wish Will Smith had a transgender child and was up at the Dave Chappelle show because I just think that some feedback needs to happen. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Blue said, because people have said this, uh, Blue said that Will was laughing at first, but Jada wasn't as if that triggered anything. Well, they're, not all yeah. laughter is showing appreciation. There's exactly. nervous laughter. There's, exactly. uh, there's uh, uncomfortable and confusion laughter. And we have learned that there is pre-pimp slap laughter, right. which might have been what he was doing. So... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, as this continues to unfold, a big thing that is happening, the Laugh Factory has just put out a, a big billboard, you know, they're a big comedy shop in, in California, and they said that they support the First Amendment right, a sign of, of solidarity with Chris and, and comedians being able to say what they want. I have a big issue with this, too. I do, too. as we talk about uh, yeah. comedians having some sign of... Well, for me, it's just write better jokes. You can come at any topic right. as long as you do it with the proper finesse, right. right? But don't tell me that you support First Amendment rights and then not allow people to stand up on your stage and use the N-word. Because if you're not allowing that, you realize that there is no such thing as absolute freedom of speech. Right. You're allowing people to say things that hurt other people and trying to disguise that as pure comedy. And I have an issue with that. Um, yeah. I'm not sure where we are with this, but just a couple more slides. Found these online as well. If the jokes you make come at the expense of others, you're not very funny. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, the other one is satire is meant to ridicule power. If you're laughing at people who are hurting, it's not satire, right. it's bullying. Okay. And I really hold that true because again, for me, this is a continuation of the conversation we were having, starting from the closing with Will Smith. Yeah. And the last thing, which I thought was incredibly amazing, yeah. someone said that giving you know uh, proper thought about this whole thing with Will and Chris, that the most important thing that we should be looking at is Jenny Thomas and Clarence Thomas and what these people are doing. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You have never, I'm saying, they, they, they are demonic, okay? And yeah. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that's the couple that you need to keep your eyes on. All these other couples can't do nothing for you, but these two people can ruin your life. Yes. They, they actually, they, they, they can ruin your life. So don't be fooled or misguided or caught up in whatever is going on right now. But, um, Vosh, I just, you know, thank you, first of all, for indulging me in, in this conversation about that. Yes. And thank you, viewers. So hold on. I, I, I want to get a couple of viewers, uh, you know, opinions here. I see Judy told me to preach. Yes, I was passing the plate, uh, Judy. Yes, yes, I was. <laughs> I was. I was having a moment. Yes. If Will was dark skinned or if Chris was white, a very different outcome. Absolutely. 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 But make no mistake and let me also say I don't advocate violence yeah. I don't I don't at, at any juncture and so I've been to enough therapy that you know what I'm saying thank God I know how to control myself when I get to a, a place because I've done some things that I'm not proud of in the moment where I'm like where I just like tapped out and said you know forget everything yeah. I've done it I'm not gonna share it with you but I've done it so I I'm I know that that it can happen, yeah. but it doesn't make it right. No. And so, Will, you have to live with this for the rest of your life. The world has to live with it because now we can't even look at, you know, memories from the Oscar where Hattie McDaniel won the first Oscar. They, that, that seems almost irrelevant right now because all they're gonna talk about is somebody slapping somebody, <laughs> him slapping Chris Rock, what the yeah. hell? You know what yeah. I'm saying? If mm -hmm. Chris was 6'2", Blue said it, it wouldn't have happened. See, stop <laughs> it. Stop it. It was just wrong. Blue, you know, Blue, you're wrong. But no, that 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 was really wrong. So, okay, Vosh, anything else you have to say? Thank you for letting us beat that horse, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully it will go away soon. But we, we, we got a show that we want to get on because we need yes. to talk to you about some investment tips for your tax refund. Are you, yes, you ready, Vosh? Let's enhance your lives. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's enhance your lives. <laughs>